Rav Gershon was an extremely modest person. And only in his very old age was the leadership thrust upon him, really thrust upon him. So my Dora about Rav Gershon is he was an Avreich, a hundred years old. And his Seder Yom, after 80 years in yeshiva, was fundamentally the same. He was an Avreich all his life, till his last day. How long is an Avreich and Avreich? Usually five years, six years, seven years, 10 years. At some stage, he's tired of being an Avreich. Either he, he's a Rosh Hashiva, or he becomes an Askin, or a fundraiser, or he just goes out to work. Rabbi Gershon was an Avreich for 80 years. He learned 80 years the same sugyas, the same sechtas, with the same fervor and the same passion as the first day he came to Yeshiva. What was unique about Rabbi Gershon? He wasn't a boki like Rabbi Chaim. He wasn't a machadish with the beauty of Torah like his shutaf. She a bottle of Chaim Torah and Baruch and Rebel, Rebel of Ravarsky, a Kodesh Bok, she sent him a full Shalem, a Richa Siom and Nishonim. Most of you probably know Rebel. You heard his beautiful, flowery, and amazing shiurim. Reb Gershon wasn't nearly as engaging, as colorful. But what's, what's special with Reb Gershon was his yashus. He was very, very yosho. Reb Chaim Velazhen writes in one of his famous letters, and I quote, Rav Gershon possessed a certain yashas and a certain pashtas, which is very appealing, and it's la mito shultoira. So the story goes, when he was a younger man in Panovich, the Panovich of all, Rav Kahneman, told him, you have such beautiful scores, so it's gelatis for us. Why don't you print the safer? And he says, of course, I'm still working on my sforas, and I hope they would be even better. But Abishalava says, that's also a, a, a sfori yeshova. Well, that's a sfori yeshova as well. He was an unbelievable masman. And his greatness was his shleimus, ishuas koilois, benodem lamokam and benodem lachaveiroi. I heard from a person that used to accompany him on his travels, you know, and he didn't travel much. He didn't go to many yeshivas by his man to give shiurim. Because his shiurim weren't exciting, they were fundamental. But this young man accompanied him whenever he got into a car and he drove anywhere. And he told me he always had a Gamora or a Seifa Musa with him. And he would always. <laughs> Utilize the time he's sitting in a vehicle. However, whenever he got into a car, he first inquired who his driver is, how's he doing, how's his family. Fundamental And he always told his driver to follow the rules and the laws and to drive carefully and safely. And that is so important. Gershon was honored. In many ways, there are similarities between Rabban Aleib and Rabbi Gershon. Rabban Aleib was far more famous. The American community was exposed to the greatness of Rabban Aleib in his travels to America. And I had the unbelievable, <coughs> the unbelievable privilege. And I thank Rabbi Shlomo for giving me the opportunity to accompany Rabban Aleib. In many ways, they had similarities. Their modesty, their anvas chayin, and their greatness in Torah. Like Rabbi Anlai, Ibgeshen scorned COVID. 
not only did it mean nothing to him, he was repulsed by color. So a younger man once came to ask a Eitzah from Reb Gershon. He davens in a shul of Bnei Torah, and every week between Kabbalah, Shabbos, and Marev, one of the Abreichim says a Devar Torah. So he asked Reb Gershon, should I say a Chabura, you know, in Lomdis, or Devar Chizuk, a Gadata, maybe a Musa thought. Reb Gershon said, do you think anybody is interested in what you and Machadish and Koylan and Sugi are learning? I mean, they're not learning the same Suga. They don't learn in your Koylan. Who cares about what the Chidushim that you said? Of course, say a Melida Gadata. Maybe you touch someone's heart. Maybe you inspire someone to come closer to a Kodesh Baruch Hu. But the Avrech said, but it's a meaning of B'nai Torah. And the Gabe says, it's an embarrassment to say a Gadata. You know, we're all Tamid HaChachamim. And I'm a great Talmud Chachamim. And Reb Gershon laughed and he said, so what's more important, your COVID or maybe opening one heart and bringing one individual closer to one Kodesh Baruch Hu. So to Reb Gershon, that is all that mattered. Bringing people closer to one Kodesh Baruch Hu, bringing physic to the world. He had time and patience for everyone even though he was an unbelievable masman. So one of the chosh of the people at my base then is of Katsanel Boyd and Rabbi Hilo. And he visited Rabbi Gershon just two months ago with his family, with his children. Rabbi Gershon was 100 years old. When you're 100 years old, you know you don't have that much time. When you're 100 years old, you know it doesn't last forever. And he tried to take advantage of every moment you have and Gershon asked each and every one of his children, what's your name? What are you learning? And with so much patience, as if he's just waiting for someone to come into his house and schmooze with him. Those were his beautiful midas. They know them. As I said, and Hugo was thrust upon him, he always tried to run away. So after the Banale passed away, even during the lifetime of Reb Chaim, Reb Chaim was the ultimate Yosh of oil. And Reb Chaim dedicated his time to individuals and he tried to shy away from another Sibu. But primarily after Reb Chaim passed away, that was the Gershon's term to serve. And he saw that totally as service, service to HaKadosh Baruch and service to Klai Yisrael. So Rav Gershon was a sage, 90 years of Omer Atayla, almost 80 years of Arbotzis Atayla, the ultimate Avrech. He was a Ben Yeshiva till his last day. And he had this unbelievable, amazing schus, clarity of mind to this very last day. A day before he passed away, he still gave a short shear. And our generation was blessed to have amongst us a goal of this magnitude and this modesty and this anova. And we have so much to learn from that. So he lived a hundred years and many times I say, some people ask, well, nobody lives forever. What are you crying about? I imagine that when the base of Mikdash was destroyed, nobody asked, how many years did this house stand? 400 years. Well, not many houses stand 400 years. What are you crying about? The base of Mikdash is not a house like any other. It's not a building of Eitz Evan. The base of English was Mokom Ashkina. The base of English was Ha'or Sponim. As long as we had the Beit of English, I could spoke who dwelled amongst us. It is the same with Gedoli regardless of how old they are. It's always ours. These great Siddiqam are Megan on the door. We have so much to gain 
just by looking at them, just by observing their condition, their another. So it is always a tremendous loss. We should be a male Yosha for Klan Islam. And we should be Zoycha because of the Tchiyas Amesa man, Binya Beis Amigdash, Memeheram, Viamenu Amen. Amen.